Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Transformers Kingdom Rodimus Prime review and guys let's get this out of the way first and foremost. Does this thing make a good hot rod? Not in the slightest because the hood is more of that snub nose which works better for Rodimus vehicle mode. When you look at his previous Power of the Primes iteration obviously it's taking the reverse approach which as we will see later on has the reverse effect. But one of the other weird things that feels like it should go with this guy is the black flames. Like on the hot rod, it actually made sense that they were blue. You know, when you start comparing these guys, all three of them together, clearly the best one here to do a hot rod is none other than hot rod. So overall, we will get to Rodimus here in just a second, but I do have to address the good and the bad. So let's address the bad first is right here you can see this clip that does it does have a tendency to stick down now through the numerous and rigorous carpet test I have done is it's not catching on my carpet but it is definitely leaving a trail where this thing is digging into the carpet the other thing about this is that if you guys can see that there are these slots that the whole wheel assembly goes up into now, it's more of a problem in Rodimus mode than it is in Hot Rod, but if there's too much weight, these will actually be pushed farther up into their slots, and they actually have, as you can see here, it's a cover. So if they get pushed up too far, you'll have the wheel get jammed up, and the cover will start to pop off the wheel. Now, the one thing about Rodimus is that for Commander class, and you'll see this more on the trailer than him, but as you can probably already tell, the boy is sporting at least, just in vehicle mode alone, five combat ports. So, um, yeah, that's just indicative of what you'll see here eventually. So, here we finally have Rodimus in vehicle mode. Overall, the general aesthetic of the trailer is actually pretty much spot on. And again, that snub nose comes into work perfectly because his cab always did stick out a little bit and maybe it is a little bit skinnier than the animation model, but I'm okay with that. Now, mine is actually a little bit of a defective copy. And that is actually up here on the trailer bit because while I can get the back section to snug up, it's this section right here. Now, I do have it fully clipped in. However, if you guys can see, these pieces that form the sides, they aren't exactly flush like they should be because if they were flush, the top section would actually hold in a lot better. And it's a little bit warped, so it doesn't ever really line up all that well. Like I said, if I try to get the front, I have to like hold it like this for it to be completely closed up. But the moment I let go, it, you know, you could see it starts to slide a little bit. And the fact that mine has that little tiny defect uh, it, it bugs me to no end. Now if you guys saw, I actually did mention that he has ports aplenty and this is not even getting to the meat of it. We do joke about it looking like a, you know, Winnebago, but it is clearly a space truck. Above his truck cab, you can see you got this little space right here. Another thing is this kind of pull-out tray on the bottom where you can store a ton of crap if you want to. And then we get to the back of his trailer. Now when you open up his trailer, most of the time his cannon will sit in there if you choose to let it sit in there. But for sake of argument, we're going to pretend you didn't see that. Because if we open up this still back here, and this still back here, oh my, what is that? Well, it is none other than Gigawatt. Yes, this boy actually fits into the back of Rodimus's trailer. But, guess what? He is not the only one that fits. I literally spent just a few minutes testing all these boys. And these four, they all fit within his trailer if you want to do that. So how does Kingdom Rodimus fare to his Power of the Primes version? Well, I'm not gonna lie guys, he is straight up embarrassing this fool. Because he is so puny compared to him, which thank goodness, you know, because 
Keenan Rodimus is a commander class. I would hope he'd be bigger than this one. So definitely not, you know, the most perfect in his vehicle modes. But let's see if Rodimus can pull it out of the bag as far as robot mode goes. So here is Rodimus's trailer in its battle station configuration. And I'm going to say, you know, hey, it's it's okay. It's not fabulous. It's not grand. But if you don't want to have him and or the gun there, you can just take it off. Now, one of the things that I was talking about earlier in this video is look at this thing. This thing looks diseased with all the combat ports on it. Because this trailer, all over it, externally and internally, in total, has 52. 50 two combat ports. Then on the cannon accessory it's got one so you have 53 and then you take the five from Rodimus and in grand total this set has 58 combat ports. <laughs> Just to put that in perspective that is more that is about four to five times the amount of combat ports that Skylinks has alone which that is just absolutely nuts. Now this boy does come with a blue version of the Fire Blast Fire Tree. And I have to say, I really like this coloration. It feels nice and different. But you can see we have the other two that generally come with the Fire Tree plugged in, as you saw earlier. And this little thing is pretty interesting. Now it does have a bunch of screw holes. That one combat port is right here. The rest of these are too big for any other weapons or anything like that to fit in. So. So here we can see Rodimus with his past self, and I have to say that seeing these guys next to each other, it looks awesome. And I do like the differences, but these guys in particular have one special thing about them. And it actually stems from this thing in his chest right here, which, to show it at full effect, I want you guys to see something. Arise, Rodimus Prime. Optimus. Yep, that's literally it. Here we take a look at Rodimus as his normal self, and then that Splinter Timeline version where he became Rodimus Unicronus. I like normal Roddy over Macho Bot Roddy Savage over here, but uh, I'm at least glad to have a untainted, pure main timeline version of Rodimus. And of course, would we be able to show off Roddy without his arch rival Galvo? It's Good fun just to kind of put these guys in poses where they're just basically going at it. I do find it still odd that Galvo is still taller than Roddy, so what a monster. In the Japanese continuity, I guess Roddy actually had a sword that he could use. Oh, and that's another thing is when you take this sword off the back, you can notice how absurdly huge that spoiler is on the back of him, which is kind of funny. But anyway, in regards to the sword, while it does feel a bit small, it is kind of cool to see Rodimus with a sword, I'm not going to lie. Even though, again, I do wish it was a little bit bigger. So here we are at the end of the road. And uh, yeah, I gotta say that Roddy fits in pretty well with these figures. And even though some of them are older figures, I mean, he still looks pretty good with them. Uh, some of the studio figures, like, I didn't really care for Blur or Cup, and I didn't really didn't like the new Earthrise RC, so you know what? These will work just fine. He still looks pretty good with them. And uh, other than that, guys, there's really nothing else to tell you about Rodimus. So, I hope you guys enjoyed our look that we took at him and all the other figures that co-starred on his review. But until next time, guys, we'll see you in another one.